Hello everyone, uh, my name is Marcelo Sakicin. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about Chupacabra. It is a open source uh, do-it-yourself tool for uh, interacting uh, with automotive uh, CAN bus. Uh, just a quick disclaimer, uh, this presentation is based solely on my opinions. It has nothing to do with my employer. Uh, and keep in mind if you attempt to do uh, the things that I'm covering here, you, you might potentially damage your vehicle. And keep in mind, if you damage your vehicle, malfunctions may or may not incur in safety issues for you and others. So be careful if you attempt doing uh, stuff here. I cannot accept the risks. Um, okay, uh, a, little about, a little bit about me. I'm a security uh, engineer. I do uh, secure development life cycle. I work close with the dev teams on my daily basis uh, to make sure uh, they write secure code and applications. Um, I try to do a lot of automation with Python and we're gonna, and surprise, surprise, uh, the Chupacabra uh, that I develop is uh, very, uh, uses Python a lot. Uh, and my first exposure to CAN, uh, to the CAN protocol, was a while ago when I was a secured uh, software engineer and I developed some uh, uh, industrial control software. And we know that uh, a lot of POCs uh, rely on the CAN open uh, protocol for communication. I also like building uh, stuff with uh, single board open source hardware, such as BeagleBone and Raspberry Pi. Uh, and one, one of the cool things that I, I, I built was some coding bots so I could teach my kids learning Python. And this is uh, uh, what brought me here because uh, I attempted to, when I tried first to, uh, to do some can hacking, um, I, Research it and Cantact was uh, the most uh, uh, known tool for doing that. And because of, uh, and, but it was sold out uh, on a lot of uh, vendors. And they, they even mentioned it was because of DEF CON. DEF CON. It was really uh, interesting. And then I remember that uh, one of those bots that I, I built for my kids, I used the, uh, the BeagleBone Glue, which uh, had uh, embedded uh, a embedded can controller and the transceiver on it. So, uh, and I, I I thought considering options, and I I, I said, well, uh, why not uh, try doing that uh, using a BeagleBone Blue rather than waiting longer for 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 uh, uh, the, to be able to buy the CanTact. So, uh, so. This, presenta this presentation uh, is about how to use BeagleBone Blue socket can and Python can uh, uh, to do to interact with uh, the CAN bus on your vehicle. More specifically, to the ODB2 CAN bus. Uh, at the end, I will uh, bring some uh, research I have ongoing, it's still ongoing, no solid results, but trying to. Uh, connect to ECUs directly. It is possible, but it's still an ongoing work. Um, and I plan to make it interesting uh, for, bo uh, for both newcomers like me that are uh, uh, attempting car hacking for the first time. Uh, so the Chupacabra is easy enough to build and plug into your car and start doing stuff but it, it could be very useful for more experienced hackers as well, because since it's a single board computer, uh, uh, you could easily extend it uh, to different applications or use cases that you might have uh, when you're doing your hacking. Uh, so all the, uh, the Chupacabra code is available on GitHub. So uh, if you're an expert, Chances are that all you need to know uh, from this presentation is this URL. So you can take a look on the code. And also uh, on GitHub, I share a link uh, to uh, a Hextar.io uh, tutorial that I, I, I wrote with a very detailed step-by-step -step instruction. So you can build, build uh, a Chupacabra device exactly uh, to the one that we're gonna uh, cover in today. 
And I hope uh, the, I, I'm gonna share uh, the mistakes that I made uh, when I was attempting to do it for the first time. And hopefully it will have, help others uh, when trying to do that. And with a device easy enough to build, potentially we can engage more people on attempting car hacking and, and growing the community. So this is the device. Uh, it's basically uh, a big old bone, uh, as you can see here, um, uh, with uh, some add-ons. So basically I connected a USB cellular modem here on, on the USB jack. Uh, I connect a DC uh, jack here so I get power from the ODB. B, ODB2 port on my car. And of course I will need uh, a ODB connector uh, to connect it to my car. Um, and here, this is uh, the CAN uh, uh, port on the big old bone uh, blue. So all you need to do is to connect a JSTSH cable here. And then on the back, you connect it uh, to uh, your uh, ODB2 extension cable. Of course, you can uh, wire it directly to, uh, this is uh, uh, the, the back uh, uh, of the device. Uh, we can also see uh, that I use a battery. It's completely optional, uh, but you, you can use it even if you're, let's say you are building a car tracking application. So, and even after your car batteries die, using the battery, uh, the, your Beagle Bone will be still alive and you, you can still track uh, the GPS coordinates with this GPS module here and potentially recover your car if that is uh, your goal. So I use it very simple material. So I, I use a plastic plate like this to put all the pieces together, some rubber bands, but you can uh, build it differently. Uh, Again, all the instructions are on, on the Hackster.io article. And all you need to do is to put all those pieces together so you have a, a functioning uh, big old bone to plug uh, to your ODB2 port on your car. So, and, and also you don't need to do all the, uh, add all those parts together. I would say if all you need to want to do is to just use a socket cam to run some uh, uh, can uh, exchange some can messages with your car. All you need to do is, of course, uh, the big old bone blue and uh, a a connector like this. Uh, the name is a JS uh, JSTSH connector. You connect it to to one end to the big old bone, and then uh, you can use solid uh, uh, hookup wires like this uh, to connect it to to this. Uh, connector and then the other end directly to uh, the ODB ports uh, to your car if you want to keep things simple or uh, or you can just build it using the uh, the ODB2 extension uh, like this. Okay so what, what does uh, once you build your device what does it do? So uh, the idea here is uh, to create a connection uh, between your CAN bus from inside your vehicle to the outside world. So uh, from, from my perspective, I, I can assume that uh, most of the manufacturers create a threat modeling of their, their CAN bus system, assuming that they are gonna be isolated from the outside world. So uh, of course you would need physical access to the car, but the idea here is to create uh, a, an easy way uh, so you can exfiltrate data uh, from your car uh, to, to the CAN bus. And the Big Bone Blue makes it very convenient because it, it's, it's really easy to connect the GPS module that I showed uh, before. Uh, and on the top of that, it already has uh, the embedded uh, Wi-Fi uh, access point and, and, and interface so you can connect it directly or connect it to your Wi-Fi network and access the internet. Or uh, as I showed, you could use uh, a cellular molding like this uh, to the USB port. And even if your car drives away and goes out of the range of your Wi-Fi network, you still have communication to your vehicle 
and you would be able to potentially send CAN messages to your car remotely. Uh, and one other cool thing about doing it using a single board computer, you can easily uh, expand it to some other different applications. You can, for instance, create a geofence application. You want to maybe disable your car if it goes too far, uh, or maybe you want to track it back. Uh, you can, for instance, uh, plug uh, uh, USB cameras and microphones. So if you want to capture audio, uh, you can even use uh, servos because the Big Obon Blue is a robotic, uh, 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 it's intended to for robotic applications. So you can plug servos here on those rails and perform some physical actions inside your car if you need it. You can even try to robotify, robotify your car, uh, let's put that way. So this is what it, uh, oops, sorry. Uh, this is what uh, it does. And once we run uh, the, uh, the Chupacabra inside your car, you're gonna see on your local terminal, uh, I'm assuming you SSH to your BeagleBone, uh, and you're gonna see, uh, once you run the Python script, you're gonna see uh, on your terminal what we have on the left. It, by default, it will start monitoring uh, your vehicle speed from the ODB2 port, uh, the RPM, and, and the temperature. Uh, and we'll also start uh, sending uh, all that information along with the GPS coordinates uh, to a uh, Flask application running uh, on AWS. Uh, the code, the source code for the Flask application is also available uh, on, the, on the GitHub repo. So as I mentioned by default, uh, it will send only vehicle speed, temperature and, and RPM. But uh, if you wanna use other uh, ODB2 PID uh, 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 from your ODB2 uh, uh, port, uh, I created this convenient CSV file that if on the, on the left column here on the enable disabled color, column, you just set zero and ones uh, to the uh, ODB D2 PIDs that you want to uh, enable or, or disable. So uh, as you can see here, this is one example. Uh, and all you need to do is customize it and then uh, you, you should be able to monitor other uh, information from the ODB2 port other than the speed, temperature, and, and uh, temperature. Okay, so uh, how do you connect a big old bone to your ODB2 port? As I mentioned before, uh, you have uh, uh, the CAN uh, connector here. Uh, you use the JST uh, connector to plug it here. Uh, and then all you need to do is to go to the female ODB2 port on your car and connect the CAN high and CAN low uh, uh, pins to, uh, uh, to the pin six and 14 respectively on your uh, uh, ODB2 uh, port on your car. Uh, and it brings me uh, to the first mistake I made. Keep in mind that this uh, uh, schematic, the, this, these pin numbers are uh, related to the female ODB2 port. So initially what I try to do, I, as you can see here on this picture, I try. I, I connected the JST connector to the BeagleBone, and I used some uh, uh, some uh, hookup cables. And I cut a, a cable like this. And I, for convenience, I, I, I would connect my BeagleBone hookup wires to a male ODB2 connector. And keep in mind, if you do that, uh, the numbers one to eight will be mirrored because the female connects front to front to the, to the male and female con connects like this. So the uh, eighth pin here on the female is actually the third pin here on the male. So keep those things in mind. This, this is a, a mistake that I made and I believe uh, I wanna just prevent you to wasting time doing uh, troubleshooting those, those things. And other mistakes that I did and it could potentially help you when attempting uh, this. Um, so use uh, a multimeter is your friend. 
I would be able to easily catch up that mistake if you use a multimeter and make sure uh, you have some voltage on the pins uh, that you wanna uh, tap in. Uh, and by the way, on my car, the pins three and 11 that I connected by mistake initially, they don't have any voltage there because they don't do anything. So uh, with a multimeter, you would be able to catch issues like this. Another mistake that I did was I, uh, when I saw can dump, I assumed TCP dump. So uh, it's a sniffer, right? Um, uh, sniffing traffic, so they, they, they should be similar. They are, they are in some extent. However, CAN bus is not ethernet. You need at minimum two uh, nodes on, on the bus so you, you can potentially transmit and sniff some traffic. So initially, I, I, I enabled the CAN interface on my big old one, uh, started CAN dump on one terminal, I started doing CAN send on the other, and I didn't see anything, and I didn't know why. The reason is because you need uh, two nodes so you have, uh, at minimum, so you have a, a CAN. But even before doing that, what I would recommend, play a little bit with VCAN first. Uh, it's very easy to install uh, a VCAN on a, uh, on a Ubuntu uh, Linux, for instance, and then you can uh, do uh, the can send can, uh, and can dump and monitor the messages and understand uh, how, how it works before even attempting to a real physical can. Uh, another common issue that I had to face is you have to know uh, the bit rate. Uh, so if you want to uh, can bus to work properly. And for my vehicle, it, by default, it uses 500K uh, baud rate. Uh, and yours might be different, so keep that in mind. Uh, so this is a, a suggestion. So uh, if you wanna uh, make sure your Chupacabra is working and you understand a little bit how CAN works, uh, create a, a, a CAN bus breadboard like this. It's really simple, you just, use your, uh, use some jump wires to hook your uh, JST connectors to a breadboard. The only thing you need to know is, uh, I'm using blue for can high here and white for can low. Uh, the only thing that you need to know is you need a, a 120 uh, ohms resistor at the end connecting the can high, at each end connecting the can high uh, and, and can low uh, rails. Uh, it's going to be very helpful because then you can plug two uh, big old bonds, for instance, and, and, and exchange some CAN messages uh, between each other with uh, CAN dump. Another uh, useful thing uh, that I would recommend, not necessarily, but it might be helpful, is to cut a, a, a extension cable like this. So if things are no, not working properly, uh, for instance, my first, uh, I, I bought a very simple device like this. It's a scan tool uh, that supports scan ODB2. It's very cheap and it was working. And I didn't know why my uh, Beagle Bone wasn't working properly. So I created this, uh, I cut this cable and, and hooked uh, one through 16, all the pins on my breadboard rails. And then I was able to connect it uh, this device uh, to, to this uh, extension and the extension to the car. And then here on the, on the picture with the zoom, I could hook uh, the JS2, uh, JST connector to this breadboard and then start can dump there. And for instance, use this device to retrieve the VIN number. And then I would see uh, the exactly messages that it was exchanging and understand uh, what could be wrong on my big old bone that I was, wasn't getting right. In the, in, in, and in my case, what I didn't know at that time was this. I was expecting to plug uh, the big old bone to the ODB2 port, start can dump, and I was expecting to see a lot of traffic there. But what I noticed is that my ODB2 port was silent. It was just it was just listening to, because it was segmented to the other CAN buses on the car. So it was just uh, ex uh, waiting for uh, some specific uh, CAN messages to reply to it. And this is exactly uh, what happened. This is when I sniffed 
uh, uh, the, the comments from this device here, that was the can message I saw. And then uh, in using uh, the can dump on, on the can zero from the big old bone, I saw the, the, the request and the response with my VIN number there. Uh, yeah, so, uh, all right, so let's say uh, you're confident enough, you understand how to play uh, with can uh, bus using a big old bone. Uh, and now you wanna, uh, and you built your Chupacabra device and you wanna, you wanna run it on your vehicle. So my suggestion would be uh, play a little, little bit first with a socket can and make sure everything is working. So just uh, try different bit rates. For instance, here uh, on this, uh, I'm trying the 500K, which is what worked for my car. Enable the, the can zero uh, interface and, and open another terminal with can dump and on a different terminal you send uh, the, the request VIN uh, uh, message. And by the way, all those messages, including this request VIN is available on the CSV worksheet uh, that I have available, available on GitHub. So you can try different stuff there. Once you know, uh, once you see the request and the response, you know that your uh, Chupacabra and your Beagle Bone is able uh, to properly uh, use socket scan in your car. And then if you want to test the GPS module, uh, you would recommend using uh, this TIO uh, command. Uh, by default, uh, it uses the serial port TTY02 uh, with baud rate 4800. This is a specific one that I use it. All the parts uh, uh, are listed on the Hackster.io article and I point to vendors that supply them. So, and when you start the, the TIO command, you're gonna see a lot of uh, GPSs, uh, GPS sentences flowing around. Uh, and wait a little bit for, for the module to find a GPS satellite. And once you get some uh, GPRMC sentences, similarly to this one that I, I have on screen, you can use a online decoder just like this rl.sc. It's really cool, by the way. Um, you just need to provide the GPRMC and it will plot uh, your exact locations on a map. Uh, for cellular connection, so for, for connection, all you need to do is to make sure you have uh, internet connection uh, from your Beagle Bone, either by using uh, Wi Fi network. Or, um, or, the, or, or a cellular LTE modding, which is what I did. Uh, I use the hologram vendor because it's very Python friendly. The documentation is really good. Uh, so it was really easy to install it and, and get it working on my, on my Beagle Bone. Uh, again, all the documentation is available on my Hexer.io article. And at the end of the day, all you need to do is to ping a, a public server on the internet and make sure you have internet connection. So the data that your Chupacabra is capturing can be exfiltrated to, to a server. And once you know everything is working properly, it is time for you to clone the repo, uh, go to the Chupacabra folder and play around a little bit with the CSV files and enable and disable uh, the ODB2 PIDs that you are interested in. And then just uh, run the Python script. And by the way, it's all Python 3 based. I, I don't think it works with Python 2. Right? And, and if everything goes well, we are gonna see all the ODB2 PIDs that you enabled being displayed on the screen. And also if you have an internet connection, by default, it's gonna be uh, exfiltrated to this uh, public uh, AWS Flask app uh, that I, I have running and by default the script points to that. If you wanna create your own, just use uh, the code uh, available on this uh, server or on this GitHub uh, uh, repo. And then you can customize it, run in a different uh, cloud environment and, and customize it any way you want. Okay, uh, let me run a quick demo video here so we have an idea uh, how the, uh, how the Chupacabra works. So this is the device. I'm gonna plug uh, into the ODB2 port from, from my car. The engine is on, already running. 
yeah, so I'm just showing where is the ODB2 port on my vehicle. It's usually some close to the steering wheel. And then I'm gonna put it on the dashboard because I'm gonna monitor it from outside the vehicle. This is something that is really convenient compared to the other solutions because you have the uh, embedded access, Wi-Fi access point on the BeagleBone, you can just connect to it and run Chupacabra from there. This is what you would get on, on your terminal if everything goes well. And then you can uh, monitor your car. Of course, if it goes out of range, it will, it will won't work, but you can monitor uh, your ODB2 data from outside the car. Um, let me, and now I have a test from inside the car. Here is I'm running uh, the same test from inside the car. But the cool thing here is I'm, I'm going, I perform a, a, a lap around the course and I'm monitoring the GPS uh, data. So it's exfiltrating uh, using uh, the cellular network to the AWS server uh, that I, I, I had running, right? And you're gonna freeze the video exactly uh, uh, where the coordinates was exfiltrated. Then when I got home, I just visited the public uh, AWS Flask application and I saw all the GPRMC sentences available there and I could plot them on the map. So if I was away from the vehicle, I would be able to track it uh, wherever uh, uh, it was. Uh, and if you plot all the, uh, and it will, all, GPS will also give you the speed. Uh, and if you plot all the coordinates that are, are available in the application, uh, you would have an idea uh, from where the, the vehicle was traveling. So I, I performed a course around some, a few blocks and this is uh, what I show here. All right. Um, so this is, this is how the device worked, right? So, uh, it is able to exfiltrate ODB2 and GPS data. But what's next? And this is a, a currently work. I, I have only preliminary results, but probably the next thing that you wanna do is to go beyond of the ODB2 CAN bus and actually tap into a real uh, CAN bus uh, for your vehicle. And you can do it using the, the exactly same device. So what I've been doing so far, so rather than reverse engineering every wire inside and disassembling my, my, my dashboard, that would be insane uh, hard work to do. Uh, you can alternatively, alternatively go to your dealership and get a book like this, uh, a supplemental, uh, electric supplemental manual, and it will give you a lot of detailed information uh, about all the cables where all the, uh, the electronic components from your vehicles are located and, and, the, connect, and the connections between them. Uh, so for instance, uh, really close to my steering wheel on, on, on my vehicle, I, had the, I have this ETEX ECU that is also located pretty close to the ODB2 connector. So I thought, okay, let me uh, connect those two uh, can uh, buses that are uh, uh, segmented from my vehicle and then I can monitor everything. And that was my goal. So knowing where the, uh, the ECU is, is pretty, it helps a lot. And here is a picture of the vehicle. So to get physical access to, the, to that specific ECU, all we needed to do was to remove a couple of plastic covers from my vehicle. And that was it, I, I could see uh, the, the, the ECU from, from the bottom of the, the driving seat. Uh, and also uh, the electronic supplemental will give you detailed information about the ECUs on your car. So for this one specifically, if you look uh, to the picture on the left, on the bottom, I have this C411 uh, connector. And if you go deep on the, on the manual, you're gonna notice then on the diagram on the right, on the top, uh, you have, uh, you know, you would know that the C411 connector is actually connected to a CAN drive. And 
the pins eight and nine are connected respectively uh, to can low and high to another uh, 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 component they, they call ECM on this vehicle. And not only that, you know, uh, you have the wiring colors used uh, for those cables. So I, I know that the, the can high uh, on pin nine is BR, which is brown cable, and the can low uh, on pin eight is a Y, uh, a yellow cable. So looking carefully to inside uh, my dashboard, I was able to find this ETAX ECU with this specific connector. And, and, and you can see the brown and yellow cable uh, on pins eight and nine. And also uh, close to the arrow that, that I, I put, you can see the ODB2 uh, port on the top. So again, so, so what, I, I, what I needed to do, all I needed to do is to use a hookup wire like this. This is not the actual CAN cable. It's just a hookup wire that I manually twisted myself. Oh, this is another uh, common mistake. Uh, make sure your can you either use a real CAN cable or if you're using hookup wires like me, make sure they are not too long because they, they might not function well. And you can try to manually twist them to mimic uh, what a, a real CAN cable would, the physical properties of a real CAN cable. Uh, but back to this, uh, be, be aware that by bridging those segmented, segmented CAN buses on your, on your car, you, may, you might damage your, your electronic components on your car uh, and incur in safety uh, issues for you and for others. So be sure you know what you're doing and, and, and be careful. Uh, okay, so once I, I got a physical, a good physical connect, connection with those pins, I used a multimeter to make sure uh, I had good wiring. Uh, on this specific ECU, when I have the, the ignition off, it gives me 1.13 volts, but when I turn the, the ignition on, uh, you, I, 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 I get the, two, the expected 2.5 volts. Another mistake that I did, uh, if you, I recommend turning on the engine because you would very quick uh, kill your battery. I, I did that, don't, don't make the mistakes that I, I did. Okay, so now that I know uh, with the multimeter that I have, a good physical connection uh, with the ECU. I, I connected the other end of the, the hookup wires directly uh, to the back uh, of the big old bone uh, with the other, uh, with the existing uh, can high and can low uh, uh, cables uh, that I, uh, wires that I, I had to the ODB2. And that's all I, I needed to do. And then, uh, by doing that, as opposed to the initial result that I had only with the CAN, uh, uh, the ODB2 CAN, now if I run a CAN dump uh, uh, from the Chupacabra device, now I see a lot of traffic between this ETAC CCU that I connected and the other uh, electronic device ECM uh, from my vehicle. I, I, I can tell, I can guess it's the, the engine and this other uh, ECU communicating and exchanging information through the, uh, the the CAN bus. All right, so what so that's what that's what I, I where I, I got so far. What, what I'm planning to do that that's what I'm trying what I'm trying to do right now is to reverse engineering some of those messages. For instance, I'm trying to uh, use a, a CAN dump to write, uh, uh, to save the traffic, to, uh, to dump the traffic to a, to a local file, do something on the vehicle, for instance, opening and closing the power window, and then using CAN player, uh, try to replay uh, the traffic, and try to uh, uh, open and close the window uh, just by replaying the messages. The problem is I'm I, I, I wasn't so successful doing that so far. And every time I try, I try that, I, I get a beautiful and shining uh, service engine light on my vehicle and I'm, I, I, I might break my vehicle. <laughs>
at some point. Uh, and not only that, maybe I'm not even connected to the right CAN bus that I should be tapping into if I want to open and close the window. So I have uh, a lot of work to do uh, to do that yet. But what tells me uh, I'm on the right path is when I do CAN sniffer, unfortunately, because it's a very busy CAN bus, I s it's still very polluted to, to me to tell exactly what's going on when I open and close the window, but I see something go, uh, uh, some action there, some, some different, some new messages showing up when I'm, I'm doing those actions. So I, I still don't know what's going on, but that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, uh, get some interesting can messages so I can replay that, them later. So since I wasn't able to get uh, the, for instance, the opening and closing window yet, let's assume the message that I want to uh, uh, do remote execution on my car is the retrieve VIN message, right? Uh, which is the one I, I'm highlighting here uh, with the, uh, the can send command. So my goal is to create a kind of RPC uh, where I have a new uh, uh, endpoint on, on the, uh, on the uh, Flask application running on, on the cloud that I would be able to send any kind of message that I wanted to be executed remotely on the car. Of course, I had to, uh, uh, to URL encode the, uh, the hashtag here so I could uh, uh, send a post this URL uh, to my Flask application and, uh, and, and get it available. And in order to do that, here's a oversimplify, oversimplified version of the changes that would be needed on the current Chupacabra implementation. Uh, yeah, and by the way, once I get it working, I will, I will update the code and make it available. But if community guys, if you feel free to fork the code and and or even submit pull requests. I, I would be very excited if people uh, would start doing that uh, actually. But the idea here is uh, to do what I showed before, submitting uh, messages remotely uh, to create this kind of uh, reverse HTTP uh, command and control. I would create on the, on the, on the server application a queue uh, and two uh, new endpoints. A, getting post endpoint on this RPC endpoint. And whenever you, you send a, get a post message with the, uh, with the can message, it would add to the queue. And then on the, on the get request, you would pop uh, a message, a can message from the queue and, and, and potentially, and then you execute it on the, the client. So the changes on the client, the chupacarber.py would be basically hitting the RPC uh, 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 Flask application with a GET request, it would give you uh, the key, a keyword can message that you submitted, and then it would send it to the bus and execute uh, uh, on your car. Of course, this is a very oversimplified version. Just to illustrate, you would, you would need to add some error catches here, some logic, uh, and even you would need to parse uh, the JSON data uh, to 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 put your your can message uh, together, but that that's the idea. So this is one suggestion. This is uh, what I'm I'm going for. Uh, uh, but again, uh, it's a Python code on a uh, open source hardware platform. Feel free to uh, to do uh, whatever you you want to do with it, right? And the takeaways here uh, from this presentation is, again, I want to build a open source hardware and, and, and software platform that, that could uh, be useful for newcomers that are attempt, attempting this for the first time, but also for more experienced guys that, that see uh, a need for a single board computer running on a car where they could uh, remotely uh, do some stuff there. Uh, currently, I only uh, uh, the, the code that I have on, on GitHub only do GPS and ODD, ODB2 can uh, messages data exfiltration. But I, I has just showed I plan to expand it uh, uh, in the future. Uh, yeah, so let's let's use it, guys. I'm open to feedback. 
uh, let's grow the community and, and, and let's have fun. Uh, oh, one thing I would like to uh, thanks, uh, thank my, my friend Robert from Autobahn AI. He helped me a lot with all his knowledge on, uh, uh, on automotive can uh, with issues that I have, troubleshooting things and attempt different approaches. So thank you, Robert. It was really appreciated. Uh, and that's all I have, guys. So again, uh, all the information uh, that, uh, that you need to build the, the Shupa Carbra is available on GitHub. Uh, and if you have any questions, suggestions, uh, hit me on social media. Uh, I, I would be very help, uh, happy to see uh, people using the device. And, uh, and if people uh, have, have the same issue that I have trying to buy other open source tools because they were sold out, let's make uh, Big O Bond sold out. I, I'm going to measure uh, the... Uh, uh, the success of this presentation uh, based on whether or not we can uh, sold out all the Big Bone Blues uh, next year because everybody will be trying to hack their cars using this open source platform. So uh, again, thank you guys. Uh, I, I'm open for questions. Uh, uh, reach out to me either on social media or on, on the Q&A session.